First, we need to understand what entropy is. The quick answer is that basically entropy is the number of ways in which a system can be arranged. A simple example would be a deck of cards which is arranged in a way that after ace of spades comes two of spades, after that three of spades and so forth. Here you could say the entropy is low. When you shuffle the cards, the entropy will increase and the cards will be arranged randomly. When you shuffle a deck of cards, there are more ways for those cards to be arranged randomly than a specific way. Although it's statistically possible to shuffle a deck of cards into a specific order, it's very very unlikely to occur. What you need to know for now is that an isolated system changes in a way to reach thermal equilibrium, or namely, the highest level of entropy it can achieve. Hence, the entropy of an isolated system never decreases. Or does it? Imagine something that you want to make for dinner, say pizza. In order to make a pizza, you'll need cheese, dough, and other ingredients. That is to say, there needs to be milk which comes from a cow and flour which comes from wheat, so you're going to need soil on which things can grow, an earth, a solar system, a galaxy, and at the end, a whole universe. In this recipe, it seems that everything in our universe that you can point to comes from a bigger story. But a modern cosmologist would say, in fact, to make a pizza, the easiest way is just to make that pizza out of chaotic fluctuations. Imagine a finite space in the universe. There are a finite number of ways in which the particles can be arranged. So if you waited long enough, you should be able to get interesting results. One implication would be that if you put an ice cube somewhere, entropy increases and the ice cube gradually melts. But after a very long period of time, the process should reverse itself and an ice cube should be formed as a result of random motion of the molecules in that particular space. This seems to defy our definition of entropy. But Boltzmann was convinced that entropy is fundamentally statistical, meaning it doesn't have to go up. So imagine a universe that has come to thermal equilibrium. This cannot last forever. Most of the time, just as in a deck of cards, the particles will stay in a high entropy state, but there will be fluctuations, and lower entropy states will be found. So if you waited long enough, there will be enough large fluctuations to form an entire galaxy. After all, if you waited forever, anything could happen. Obviously, it's much easier to get small fluctuations and get a tiny bit away from thermal equilibrium than it is to get a much much larger fluctuation from thermal equilibrium to a galaxy. This has a horrifying consequence. Think about something that you want to make in a universe that can last an arbitrary length of time. You'll get that thing by the smallest possible fluctuation that could let you make it. So, if you wanted to make a pizza, you wouldn't have to make a whole galaxy or a whole solar system for that matter. It's much more probable for a pizza to be formed via fluctuations than it is for a whole solar system or a whole galaxy. The twist of the story is that, if you wanted to have a human being, you wouldn't need a whole universe. In fact, you would only need to fluctuate a brain with already formed memories and experiences. This is far more likely than having those memories and experiences actually happen to us. If you believe yourself to be a fluctuated brain or if you find such brains in the universe, what you have stumbled upon is called Boltzmann brains. 